Hey, this is Bailey. And I'm Timothy. And welcome to What's Sleep Podcast. Let's get right into it. Welcome back. Merry Christmas, you guys. Yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed your Christmas. Yeah, I hope you guys huh. got everything you wanted. Oh, yeah. We did take a little bit of a break for Christmas, but, you know. Spent time with the fam, things yeah. like that. Um, but I had a good time for Christmas. You know, yeah. I was able to relax a little bit, take some time and hang out. <laughs> spend some time with the parents, things right. like that. So, and I hope everyone participated safely in their Christmas festivities. I hope everyone's in good health. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. And just to kick off the Christmas spirit, we're going to talk got? about a very murderous woman. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, not sure if you've ever heard of the uh, Russian noble. I'm going to butcher this name. Daria Nik- Nikola Venya Ivanova. That's not a pretty good name. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> also uh known as daria saltikova probably just really butchered that but daria as i will call her because that's super easy for me to pronounce all right <laughs> uh was born on november 3rd in 1730 oh okay so this takes back it takes place years ago right uh during the russian empire uh her parents nikolai Avtonomov, Atonovmovich <laughs> ivanov and anna ivanova Davidova had connections with Davidov's <laughs> uh, Musin Pushkins and Tulsi Toys family. Ooh. Oh, Lord. I need a drink after that. Russia. Man. That's why they have vodka. <laughs> exactly. That's such a stereotype. I'm sorry. So very little is known about her early life. That uh, made me sweaty. I didn't tell me about <laughs> it. Uh, Russian aristocrats. Russian aristocracy. Aristocracy. <sighs> I keep trying to say crazy. <laughs> Russian aristocracy was undergoing aristocracy. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> I said it. <sighs> what is it? Aristocracy. Aristocracy. Okay. <laughs> it keeps. It, I don't know why. Every time I see that word, I just think of aristocrats. <laughs> so I keep trying to pronounce that at the same time. Aristocracy. Russian aristocracy. <laughs> Russian Wait. aristocracy was undergoing rapid westernization during this period with the changes Peter the Great brought. Uh, Daria most probably grew up wearing clothes of contemporary European fashion and reading oh. European texts. So she was kind of bougie. Yeah, well, I mean, bit. she is a noble. She was well, oh yeah, okay. So she was very well off in the family. A well-read woman. Yeah. Uh, Daria got married really early uh, by contemporary standards to... Even then? Again. Oh, yeah. Like, super early. Oh. Um, to the mm-hmm. noble Gleb Alexievich Saltikov, who Gleb? was the- um, Yeah, Gleb. All right. Don't judge. I'm not judging. I didn't say anything. I just said, all right. But anyway. You said Gleb? I didn't say it like that. <laughs> Play it back. I said Gleb? Anyways. Anyway. Uh, he was the uncle of Nikolay Ivanovich Saltikov, a count. He was a count and a Russian field marshal and imperial quarter, and eventually prince of the Russian Empire. He ain't got nothing on Henry VIII, who had like what fifteen titles. Yeah, nothing like that. Lord, but, by the age of four. By Still the not age over of that. four. <laughs> Uh, the Saltikovs were one of the most powerful and influential families in Russia. They had land, wealth, and a direct connection to the Russian uh, throne. Dang. So they were, they could do whatever they wanted. Dang. As we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, the union between Daria and um, Gleb, they managed to produce two sons, Theodore, born in 1750 and died in 1801, and Nicholas, uh, couldn't find a, a birthday, but he did die in 1775, so he didn't live that long. Okay. So I wonder, yeah, I wonder if he only survived, like, well, I don't know how long they were married or when this, anyway, but well, yeah. Well, 
Daria I mean, it's actually years after. Oh, well, she actually lost her husband when she turned 26. So okay, they weren't married too long, um, but she subsequently became the richest widow in Moscow. Dang. Uh, following her husband's death, she became the owner of the beautiful estate near Moscow called Troisko. Troitsko? Some. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah say that's correct because I really don't know any better. Yeah, well. We- if you're Russian, I sincerely apologize for butchering these names, <laughs> but please bear with me. We're working on it. Uh, We're trying. She lived there with Theodore and Nicholas, names I can pronounce. There you go. <laughs> and also had about 600 serfs living in the property during her marriage. What, is, what do you do with 600 servants? I don't know. The, they don't all have a job. Probably. They might have. I don't know. I mean, she was the wealthiest, you know widow in all of Russia. I just Russia. can't imagine you have something for all 600 people to do. Or maybe they like cycled them out like 300 work this maybe. week. 300 maybe. I'm going to go with that because that makes me feel a little bit better. 300 still an obscene amount but. Oh yeah. But uh, during her marriage no one gave her any special attention beyond what the money and power of her husband's family could garner. Typical you know Dang. rich people things. It wasn't her wealth to begin with so. Right. It is now. Um, but she did appear <laughs> gloomy and reserved to most. And a, a pious woman, she gave money to monasteries and churches on a regular basis. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting because. Interesting because we're going to learn a lot about her. <laughs> it was during this period that she became acquainted with a young and handsome man, Nikolay Tyuchev. 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 Who would eventually become the grandfather of the renowned Russian poet Fyodor Tiuchev, don't know them. Sorry. I don't actually know. Um, she was progressively getting older and lonely, and the affair boosted her spirit significantly. Oh, okay. Uh, well, at least she's happy. You yeah. know, girl, you do you. But it was driven by desperation and passion. So the relationship came to a jarring halt when she discovered that Nicolay was also in a relationship with a young girl and had secretly oh. married her in a church. Oh, okay. Uh, he married the girl in a church? Yeah. So like behind her back. Yeah, behind her back. All right. Listen, listen, if you guys want to be with another person, I'm not saying guys like men, like I'm saying guys as an overall term for everybody. Lee. (laughs) Right. Why you got to hurt everybody's feelings? Go be with the other person. Yeah, I don't know, man. It hurts so much less to get broken up with than to get cheated on. Like. Anyway, anyway, sorry, little rant there. But the situation did infuriate her to the point uh, where she actually tried to kill her unfaithful lover. That's fair. And nearly succeeded. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Nikolay and his wife decided to run to his relative's estate in Moscow, and from there they quickly journeyed out of the region. Bye. They like she. They literally. She was literally crazy enough to where they actually left Moscow. Right. So. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Daria Saltikova wanted to kill them both, but the opportunity was lost. Obviously, yeah, they left. <laughs> uh, following her lover's escape, she poured out all of her anger, fury, and bitterness in the treatment of her serfs. Yeah. While the historians argue that there was no definite cause behind Daria's sudden turn to cruelty, it did start occurring after her, you know, lover went behind her back, married another married woman, somebody. and just yeah. left. I would so. be bitter too, but I, th- that's not their fault, girl. It began with small incidents. It uh, began. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Which in that world were relatively normal, uh, She, which is really sad to say. but Yeah, I uh, mean, the world was messed up. Yeah, like, she, still abused, is. she abused the surf girls, and literally no one took any notice of it. They were like, eh, yeah. You know, I mean, girls, you know, women they're also. That type of thing. Soon she began hurling logs at them what? for various reasons. I'm going to imagine just like firewood. Yeah. Instead like of like that. Just like straight like, up. Just wh- What was it? Um, Instead of Bell Guinness, who can literally pick up a log and throw <laughs> it at like you. Just <laughs> like bench you. <laughs> bench you and the log. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No, she was just throwing like little pieces of like firewood that, you know, the serpents were yeah. like cutting up. Things That's like rude. that. Rude. Come on. Yeah. Um, but she did this for various reasons. Uh, an instance, if they had failed to perform something like cleaning the house to her satisfaction, she yeah. would just casually throw stuff at I them. I bet you she had the the whole white glove and like ran for like her finger on something for dust. Oh, probably. That's so ridiculous. Yeah. The condition of the surf soon further deteriorated. Um, it was mostly the young girls and women who faced her wrath. 
Uh, she despised them all because, you know, oh, her yeah, husband the young or woman. her yeah. other lover left her for a much younger woman right. type of thing. So she had like a real deep resentment, even though these yeah. women and like children did absolutely nothing. To right. Her. It's still messed up. I see where she's coming from, but it's still really messed up. Yeah. But here's here's where it really takes a turn for her. The younger the victims were, the better it was. No. Yeah. Um, all the surf women living in her property reminded her of the young woman for whom, you know, Nicolet had left her. Uh, she considered them her rivals, oddly enough. Okay. Uh, so here's where I'm going to put up a warning. We're going to get into kind of what she would do to these young uh, servant girls. Mm -hmm. So if you're not about that, I recommend either skipping ahead or just going to a different one of our cases. We'll see you in our next episode. Yeah, we'll see you in our next episode. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> but she would torture the children and pregnant women by beating them, breaking their bones, ordering them to be left out in the forest naked. Good Lord. Uh, she was also known to pour boiling water oh, over the no. bodies of her victims. Ow. So That's aggressive. While she did kill some men, those deaths were infrequent. Um, right. Among all of her victims, uh, only three were actually men. If she Dang. didn't like a, a man, she would actually seek out punishment on them by killing their loved ones, like their wives, Bro. mothers, and daughters. Is, okay, chill. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. If you find your significant other has cheated on you, it's not the other person's fault. Likely they didn't know about it. Yeah, well. It's your significant other's fault. They're the ones that cheated. Don't take it out on other people. Uh, yeah. Anyway, end of that rant. Um, but yeah, she, <laughs> she was a really big sadist, and she actually gained pleasure from the misery of her victims. Obviously. Good Lord. Yeah. So all in all, it's said that she uh, has murdered 137 women Ooh. and three men. Dang. <laughs> The male deaths apparently were accidental. Sure. Yeah, so. Sure. Uh, another thing she would do is she is said to have stepped on the belly of a pregnant woman, Aww. killed the wife of a hated male serf, and in some accounts performed acts of cannibalism. She was crazy. Yeah. She is. She was crazy. Yeah. Um, other cruelties uh, for which she became infamous for were she would burn the hair of some of the servants. She would throw servant girls outside. In the dead of Russian winter, by the leave. way. Well, they have how, nowhere how to go. How close? Well, they're in Moscow. It's a big. Well, I guess it's seventeen. Yeah, okay, seventeen hundred. Like where I else they got to go? Lord. Uh, she would sever ears from servants with hot pokers. So, like, she would literally clamp oh. them and burn them off. Essentially, she would whip her female servants until the bones of their backs were exposed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is aggressive. So that's just that's just some aggressive. of the accounts of things that she has done to her servants. I'm sure there's a lot more uh, that we just haven't found out about. It's it's one. OK. So honestly, that's not even the worst part. The mm -hmm. worst part is the Serbs actually did not endure the violence silently. They actually reported the crimes diligently, but no, to no effect, because she would use her connections to the royal court. Oh, Lord. And the complaints were either ignored or, you know, the people who that's uh, ridiculous. reporting it suffered horrible consequences. That's ridiculous. So that's what happens when you have power. You can literally do anything you want. That's ridiculous. Um, it's horrifying. Yeah. Uh, in the summer of 1762, uh, two serfs named Ermele Elian. And Sakvili Martinov ran away from her property. So as okay. you were saying before, why don't they just run? Yeah. They tried. Okay. Uh, Dang. <laughs> Ermelay's three wives had been beaten to death by Daria's Oh, because, yeah, she goes after the family Yeah, by and Daria. Stuff too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Uh, oh, you can't do anything. They, like, she just would go after your family if you tried to leave or anything like that. You'd have to. You'd literally have to set up a massive plan to get out of that. You'd have to move your family out of Moscow. Yeah. You'd have to make sure <laughs> that they can't be found. Do this all secretly in case somebody was tortured for the information. You got to make sure you don't have any friends to be tortured or killed. And then you have to actually escape. Yeah. Good so, Lord, man. So 
the two who ran away, uh, they did go to St. Petersburg, where they were actually eventually granted an audience with Empress Catherine II. Catherine. 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 I don't know why I said it like that. With Empress Catherine II. Um, and after hearing their petition, she instructed the Collegium of Justice to start an investigation regarding the accusations Good. of torture and murder. And her intent was to try Daria publicly, which she believed would Ooh. promote her lawfulness initiative effectively. Yeah, that's a big that's a big case. So one of the richest widows in Moscow who So she like they happened to just run away and run into an empress who was trying to promote lawfulness. Yeah. So that's <laughs> it it just worked out. That's almost comical how yeah. the universe put that together. Granted, you know, one of them lost, you know, the wives, but Right. At the cost of getting her justice though. Yeah. Not saying it was worth it, but <laughs> not saying it was if, worth it, but if anything, at least there was justice coming. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh. Uh Daria was arrested soon after and was kept in jail for the next six years as the Imperial authorities conducted their investigation. Wow. So I guess she did kill a lot of people. She did kill a lot of people. Uh the majority of the victims who had survived were reluctant to provide evidence, predominantly out of fear Obviously. that she would get off. Yeah, I wouldn't I don't blame them. Daria was not designated as mad or mentally ill. Sure. Okay. Uh -huh. Which is kind of good because she would have gotten off. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That was the thing. I'm glad then. Uh, they knew what was up. Yeah. Uh, she remained like super unrepentant. Like she showed no oh, remorse for what care? she did. She did not care. I mean, I guess at that point, if they've got enough evidence. There has to be so much evidence that they have like, against her anyway. You know how she would, you know, donate money to yeah, like, churches she was a and pious things like woman. that? Like yeah. That? Well, well, maybe that was just a front so that they wouldn't look into well, her. Here's the thing. For all of her piousness, even the priest who came to for her confession failed to make her repent. I mean, she made she, her bed and she, she was cool with lying nothing. in it. She was so, cool with lying in it, I guess. It's just I'm, I'm glad people. for that, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it sucks that, I mean, she could at least feel a little bit sorry and say sorry, even if she didn't mean it. But if she had fought that, that's even worse because then you have to go through a longer trial. And you had to you make the family suffer through that. Oh, so yeah. at least there's that. Again, still not a good thing, but there is some silver lining. Yeah. So the investigation revealed that she had caused the deaths of about 138 people That's over the crazy. course of six to seven years. The Collegium of Justice interrogated every witness and went through all the records of the estate. That's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. Eventually, she was found guilty of torturing and murdering 38 people, but Empress Catherine II was undecided on how to punish her. Okay. In 1754, the death penalty had been abolished in the Russian Empire, and the new empress, who ascended the throne in 1762, desperately needed the support of the nobility. That's progressive. That's early to that is abolish early. the death penalty. I, what was it? I think it was... 19-what-20-something before... France. The guillotine that was like the last guillotine death. Maybe. I'm pretty sure it was like 1920. Relatively something. recent. It was very <laughs> Surprisingly. recent. Surprisingly. 1970. No. 1981. Oh, that's when they abolished it. So they abolished the guillotine in 1981, and the last execution by a guillotine was in 1977. Wow, so that's 50 much, years ago. Much later than I thought. That's crazy. That's cr <sighs> crazy. We've progressed. A little bit. Bring it back. Much Just televise later. it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> kidding. But in 1768, Daria was sentenced to life imprisonment and was, here's the funny part, she was chained on a platform in the Red Square for an hour with a sign around her neck reading, this woman has tortured and murdered. Were they allowed to throw things at her? Probably. Yeah. I don't think she cared. I think they Probably tried to not. shame her, but... I wonder what sort of laws they now, had in place to prevent. Here's, like, they, they, they took the whole uh, arrest them and bury them beneath the prison. They took that to a whole new level. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. In accordance with her sentencing, Daria was put in a monastery dungeon in chains and in darkness. Oh. Uh, she was incarcerated in a windowless wooden room for 11 years in a Moscow cloister built specifically for her. Wow. So uh, like isolation, solitary. Yeah. She was kept under 24 hour surveillance. A nun was designated to deliver her food as well as candles to eat under. With candles? That was it. She Dude. would get a candle to eat and then that was it. That's insane. All right. That's all right. she did torture people. She didn't murder people, but you know, that's torture in and of itself. Yeah, but 
I know I know what she did, but an cruel, eye for an cruel eye. and unusual punishment is a thing and it's illegal. That's crazy. Yeah. That's very sad. So But also I don't care. <laughs> I don't feel nothing for her. That'd be fine. Uh, like I said, they would be taken after she was done with her meal. So right. she literally, other than when she was getting food, she had no light whatsoever. That's crazy. For 11 years. For 11 years. Wow. There wasn't another instruction in her judgment that read, quote, from this reclusion, take her out in such a place during church services where she would be able to hear one without entering the church proper. Oh, wow. Since she was such a pious woman. Right. You know? uh, in 1779, she was shifted to one of the monastery buildings. This time, her cell had a window with shutters. So okay, she can actually see moving outside. up in life. <laughs> According to one of her contemporaries there, Daria would often curse and spit at curious spectators. Ooh. She would brandish a stick, shoving it out at them. She gradually lost her mental sanity, I obviously. I am shocked it took it that long. No, I'm sure it happened way before that. It was I, just them yeah. giving her a window really yeah, showed it. So. Whether it was caused by imprisonment in solitary confinement or was simply aggravated by it is a matter of scholarly debate. Sure. So I feel like it was the whole being left in a windowless room in a dark room in a dark room for, for 11, 11 years. years by yourself. Only candlelight for 11 years. Yeah. So that's insane. Um, on November 27th, 1801, Daria passed away in her cell at the age of 71. She had been incarcerated for 33 years oh and was laid to rest next to her relatives in the Donskoy Monastery Necropolis. Good. So like good she died. Yeah, good she died. Right? <laughs> Not good that she was laid to rest, but like she died. So this is a portrait of her. Oh, she's pretty. Yeah. Like terrifying. Yeah, clearly a noble woman, right? Like, just crazy. So here's uh one like a artist representation of some of the things she would do here. Oh no. So right here you see her whipping the backs of one of the serfs. Uh she would have some of her other servants, you know, hold them down. Yeah. Type of thing. Uh, she horrible. had one of those uh, bending things. No, not for your spine. Oh, yeah. So Dang. it's a little crazy. I don't understand how you can become so depraved. Like you have to. I don't know if that's a nature nurture thing. I feel like I sometimes feel like it's I feel a bit like of both. Because from what I could tell, she had a relatively decent life yeah. up until the whole. The breakup triggered it. The breakup triggered thing. Something but in like, her brain and she just went off the rails. But I mean, everybody goes through breakups. Right. It's I don't go out and murder 138 people <laughs> because of it. Like, wow, ridiculous. But yeah, so that is uh, the horrifying story of Daria Saltikova. Yeah, it was horrifying. I don't like the back thing. That made me feel Yeah, no, nah, I'm not about that. <laughs> It might, it might be therapeutic for me, but well, to a point, and <laughs> then they continue point. to raise where your back is being pressed against and then your back snaps again. Just a little bit. <laughs> well, I do hope you guys enjoyed this a little bit of a shorter episode. I just thought it was super it was wild, wild. And There's a lot packed crazy. into that. And I got to keep you guys on your toes after such an <laughs> ollie jolly Christmas, right? I do hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Go ahead and leave a like if you're on YouTube. Tell us what... Uh, your favorite episode has been so far. Uh, you can find all of our posts on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at What's Sleep Podcast. And then we're also on Twitter at What's Sleep Pod. Mm -hmm. So be sure to check those out where we post pictures and some uh, other behind the scenes type of things. Yeah. If you guys want to support us, you can find uh, our Patreon on our website or you can search us on Patreon. What's Sleep Podcast. Uh, we do appreciate all the support we've gotten so far. You know, we're able oh, yeah. to. Get some stuff done. We got a lot of plans for the future. And it's been a wild ride. Give you guys a little shout out if you do support us. Oh, yeah. And again, happy holidays, you guys. Do let us know if you got a What's Sleep t-shirt or hoodie. Send oh, yeah. us some pictures because I do want to see that. Hopefully you guys got all of your merch on time for those who did order. Uh, Noah's been a little bit crazy with oh, everything yeah, the going on. Service has been it's been crazy. A little bit slow, but we understand. Yeah, so be sure to send us pictures of you wearing then, your nice hoodies, t-shirts. or Drinking out of your wet sleep mug. Oh, yeah. Be sure <laughs> to do all that. And uh, yeah. I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and catch you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.